Good morning, Facebook world, and welcome to episode two of Hospitality Career Connection. I am Dr. Nikki Davis, and I am the program director for the Hospitality, Tourism, and Event Management Program at SIU. And with us, we have our co-host, Zachary Sims, and I'll let you take it. As Nikki mentioned, I am Zachary Sims, uh, live in Orlando, Florida, and own Innocent Sky Entertainment, which is a photo, video, and marketing agency and a graduate of the hospitality program as well from Southern Illinois University. And then we are going to introduce our guest today, which is Jessica Lauer. Hi, I'm Jessica. I am an operations manager at Cocktail Academy in Los Angeles, California. And there's your website. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing all of the <laughs> controlling on the side too. Um, so thank you, Jessica, for joining us and, and Zachary for co-hosting and um, we're having a lot of fun with this. It's you know two two episodes in, but we're always having fun with what we do. Um, so Jessica, you actually just started this new job, um, which which we'll talk about in a little bit what that path was. But um, give us just a, a brief you know introduction into where your career has taken you after you graduated. Um, you know, tell us what you've been doing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right after. Um, graduation from the HTA program. I well, I did the study abroad marketing program in um, Grenoble, France. So that was, I guess, technically my last semester there to get my minor in marketing. But I moved straight from France to St. Louis to do another internship with um, with a company um, in St. Louis, and then straight from St. Louis, I moved to Los Angeles. Um, it was kind of um, a move. I moved for a boy. I moved um, to be with my boyfriend who is in the film industry. But you know, it all worked out. I got a job pretty much right away. I put my resume up on LinkedIn and Age Careers and was um, and got reached out to by a smaller hotel chain, a limited service brand. And it was so funny. I just became friends with these repeat guests that would come in. And one of them was. Um, from Chicago, from where I'm from. And he just took a liking to me. He told me I did not belong at a limited service hotel. I belonged at a five-star beach hotel. Um, and he knew somebody that worked at Viceroy Management Group. And he he knew that they were hiring and he sent my resume over to them. And that's where my tenure, my seven-year tenure with Viceroy Management Group started. Um, I worked at La Meridian Delfina Santa Monica um, I started as a front desk agent, on to night audit, to VIP manager, to sales coordinator, to EMM sales manager. Um, so it really all became by this relationship I had with this guest at this limited service hotel. And um, he was, I, I, I'm so grateful to him. I owe him my career path. <laughs> but um, then, you know, I just decided it was time to leave hotels. Um, and I got into catering and um, explored the whole world of off-site catering and, and event management. And um, that's where I am today um, in the cocktail world and in events. And it's really fun. I love it. That's awesome. And that that's kind of the prime example of, um, and, and you two remember this, we were always pushing you kids, you're always my kids, um, you know, to get out and do some networking and get to know people in the industry, whether it was you know, here in Carbondale where SIU is or out and around and and that proved to work for you in this instance, right? You you made this friendship with someone, a guest, and, and that kind of launched the rest of your career. So Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that so unique about the hospitality industry though? Because you know, yeah. you're Chicago native, Carbondale, you know, so very metro, very oh. rural France, <laughs> you know, like I mean such a difference. And then it's literally just knowing someone, someone that you've met. Um, in the digital world of uploading your resume and finding finding yeah. that place. Yeah, actually, oh, I left out a piece of the story, another small world moment was when I was interviewing um, for Viceroy, the, the front office manager at the time knew my HR manager of the hotel that I was working at in St. Louis that I had just come from. So, you know, all the way across the country, everybody still knows each other in this mm -hmm. industry and um, really important to maintain those those relationships and and you know and connect with people um, because you really never know when you're going to cross paths again. 
Yeah, or when when you'll need help or or you know a connection that you had ten years ago even. So it's uh, and that's something I've experienced in my own career. And I'm I'm significantly older than you two, uh, and we didn't have things like Facebook and and all the social media that helps us stay connected. You know, after I graduated, but um, but keeping those connections and keeping those folks in in your life at some point in some way incredibly important. Yes, yes, definitely. It's also interesting to me, I, I have found the SIU connection. Um, I remember literally yeah. I moved the day after graduation, started my job two days after graduation uh, in Tennessee at the time. And that same week uh, I went to the community center because uh, they had a great gym in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I was wearing an SIU shirt for working out. As I'm leaving, a guy's coming in and I hear go dogs. And he like shouts his like class of 86 or whatever it was. And it was just this weird, like total stranger, don't know him. And we had a five, 10 minute conversation about SIU and what we did, what our programs were and all this stuff. And just who expects that, you know, 700 miles away. Absolutely. I was on the Santa Monica Pier and I saw a pair of Salukis. So um, I went up and I was like, Salukis, and we just started having conversation. They knew about Southern Illinois and you know mm -hmm. our, our mascot and everything. Um, they weren't from there, but certainly it was a conversation starter. <laughs> it uh, and it's a definite kinship. Uh, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. There, we are everywhere. You know, Salukis are everywhere, and um, and and I'd like to think that we're unique. <laughs> I'm sure all universities are kind of this way, but. Um, you know, we we meet strangers in the airport or in the hotel, wherever we're at on vacation, and and it's just this instant kinship. Um, and and I've seen that. I don't know if you guys are part of the the eight. Well, no, you wouldn't be. But the the eighties and nineties group on Facebook that's all you know former Salukis. Um, there there's a definite kinship there, and it doesn't matter what year you graduated. You could be thirty years apart in age, and it yeah, that would still be there. So yeah. My boyfriend and I, I met my boyfriend at SIU, which is why we moved out to LA mm -hmm. together. But we were going to the Cubs Dodgers game, Saluki um, alumni game every year. And I mean, there's people that are attending those games that are in their 80s who, you know, yeah. are like, you know, generations <laughs> beyond what I remember SIU being. And it's just very fun to sit at a baseball game and like have that kinship and have that connection with people. Yeah, all the way, you know, across the country. It's very cool. It's, um, there. there's a lot of alumni events, um, well, pre-COVID certainly, and I'm hoping post-COVID, but in, in Chicagoland and St. Louis where um, people do exactly that. And that happens all over the country. So it's not just, um, it's not just a network in your industry, but just generally with with former Salukis and and you know, that and that's something that I've drawn on a lot in my own career. So, and you guys will continue to as you grow into yours. <laughs> so tell us about um, your Cocktail Academy. How did you how did you route your way that direction, and and what do you guys have going on? Yeah, I mean, well, I was with the company Bruce's Catering. They're still very near and dear to my heart. Um, mm -hmm. When I left the the hotel world, uh, Bruce's Catering was my first, um, you know, initiation into offsite catering events. Um, but you know, COVID obviously, you know, put us all in a whirlwind, and you know, my time with them was cut short. But you know, they were doing everything they could to bring me back, mm -hmm. and I still consider them dear friends. But there was just a moment when I went, you know what, I'm going to have to start looking for something else. And they said, yes, go spread your wings, take care of yourself. Um, and somebody that I knew through Bruce's Catering, she's a freelance event production, you know, um, person and all of those um, mm -hmm. avenues. Um, she became a real mentor to me over the course of my tenure at Bruce's. And she passed my resume along to an uh, a old friend of hers um, who works for a branding company of, um, and they work with Cocktail Academy. So uh, that's how I ended up getting an interview and this amazing job with them, again, through somebody that, you know, I've worked with through the industry and, you know, proven myself as a professional too, mm -hmm. that they can trust to, you know, give my 
their recommendation to somebody else. So um, um, we just all really got along um, on the interviews. We were all, the company is, is kind of starting fresh. There's a lot of new faces, um, new people in the company. So it's really exciting to be part of Cocktail Academy where everybody is, you know, excited to be back in events and everybody has the same passion for cocktails and beautiful bars and seamless events. And, um, and it's really great to be a part of it. Um, I'm learning so much. I never really even thought I would end up in a catering type of career. I thought like hotels and lodging was going to be my end game. So mm -hmm. it was very surprising for me to, to end up in catering, but I love the excitement of like being at a new venue every weekend and, you know, the people that you get to meet is so expansive and you're driving all, all around town and you're working with different production companies and you get to, those very cool things that happen at these events. Musicians show up, um, you know, it's very high profile, especially in this town, you know, you never know who's going to walk through the door. So it's very exciting. Yeah. That's um, that. That's what I remember most about events is is kind of the and I'll use the terms glitz and glamour, but that's typically only what the attendees see. <laughs> Those yeah. of us on the back end of it don't necessarily. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's not all glitz and glamour. It's a lot of hard work, um, but all of that hard work, you know, when that pays off and you see the smiles on the faces and um, you know, on the occasion where you get to meet somebody really cool, like a celebrity, that that's that's when it all kind of comes together in our, our world. Yeah. 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 It's super fun. And then just being around like everybody, especially now that events are back, mm -hmm. people, people are ready to party, like including all of us behind yeah. the scenes. Like we yeah. want to do, you know what I mean? We want to go out there and throw really cool events. I mean, now is like everybody's time to shine. We haven't had events in, you know, a year and a half. So everybody is is ready for all those ideas right. you've been dreaming about for the last year to put those into fruition and and see it come to life and everybody is just as passionate as the next person um for it you know you it's it's hard to not be excited about things because the excitement and the is so contagious you know even if you feel like you're having a down day and you get on the phone with mm -hmm. the right person you're it sparks and you're excited again because it really is exciting. I mean, these are live events, you know, it's, it's hard to beat all that energy of everybody in a room together, having a good time, networking, socializing, especially after nobody's seen each other in a while. And um, it's great to see that payoff on the guest's face and, and to know that you've, you've done a great job and, you know, on to the next. <laughs> Isn't that such a, an exciting thing too? Cause like when you're in the events world, people aren't downers, you know, like, yes, people have bad days. Yes, people, I am certain that you get clients that are just irate and just, you know, about whatever thing is their nitpicky thing. But at the end of the day, they're there to have a good time as well. They're there to celebrate, you know, they're having fun and they're usually passionate about it. Um, and it's not a lot of industries that you see that in, um, whereas hospitality and events, you do, you're not, you know, it's not legal. It's not, you know, accounting, not to not, not to pick on those, those folks, but not to you pick know, on people not like Mary. Yeah, not a lot of people get excited. Yes, not a lot of people get excited to see a defense lawyer or you know, those yeah. types of things. Um, but you know, in walks Jessica, who's like, "I'm going to make your dream event come true." You know, and our our team is going to do that for you. Who doesn't get excited about that? No one's like, "Oh, thanks for making my dreams come true." You know. <laughs> I know. I mean, that's the thing about you have to have a specific personality to be in this industry. I mean, if you are a Debbie Downer, like you're not going to fit in and it's not going to be fun for you because we are smiley, joyful people. And that's why we were drawn to this career. So, you know, it's you. There's a reason why we are all landed where we are um, and why we hang out with the the professionals that we hang out with you know it's it's it is it's happy it's joyful it's it's why i chose the hospitality mm -hmm. it was like i want to make people smile and you know and at the end of the day yeah if you're not if you're not down to do that then you know, i don't know wrong, wrong choice <laughs> it's um that that personality makes teaching in the industry 
fun too. And, and all of our faculty came from industry. So we, you know, we have that same um, outgoing, mostly outgoing type A-ish kind of personality. And, and it's easy to spot, um, you know, students that have that, that gumption and that drive and um, are happy to be in the classroom and learning because they're going to be happy to be in the industry. Um, you know, we're, our students are, are all like that. So that makes that classroom environment all the more fun to, to be in. Um, not that accounting classes aren't important because we make you take those. <laughs> They are so important and we do use them. <laughs> yes, you do use them. Um, you, you might hate us at the time, but but definitely important. Um, but that that people skill and the wanting to help people part of your personality makes a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, so <laughs> Uh, Zachary, our our ever um, forever fan, has posted a comment. Looks good, sounds good, and thank goodness events are back. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, one of the things that like you had mentioned that um, you're new uh, with uh, your current company. Um, what has that been like onboarding? Not really post COVID, because obviously we're still dealing with COVID nineteen. Um, but what kind of difference has that been? Do you feel? Uh, joining in you know 2021 versus what it would have probably been like in 2019. Yeah, I, I mean, I really feel like it it was hitting the ground running. I mean, there was a you know training intro, introductions and all that um, on how their particular company is working, um, but I, I think they are relying on me and my my skills and my experience to really push, you know, events are back and they're back fast. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of time right now to do, you know, really detailed time consuming onboarding. So, you know, being able to be confident in my decisions and my experience and making decisions and, and, and producing events is, I think why, you know, I was chosen for this particular job at this particular time. Um, you know, maybe this position would have been filled by somebody else, you know, a couple of years ago before COVID. But um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting starting, you know, post pandemic. I just like I said, I don't really think there's a whole lot of time for people to um, to do significant onboard. Obviously, in the, in the best case scenario, that would happen. But it just events, they don't wait, you know, they don't wait for, for you and you, you got to catch up. Absolutely. I, go ahead, Zach. <laughs> yeah. And I was just going to kind of add to that, you know, I think that we're seeing that really across the nation, every industry, uh, especially hospitality, you know, being in Orlando, Florida, uh, you know, talking with events people, it's the same way of, you know, even California and Florida, obviously we're very different in, uh, shutdowns, restrictions, and things of that nature, but people still weren't having events, even if they were able to have events um, in the state of Florida. And it literally went from no one, you know, using uh, the nation's largest convention center as a code vaccine site yeah. to the next, I think the weekend after the vaccination site ended, the mass vaccination site ended, I think that event center, it went something, there was like 45 volleyball teams for a national tournament. I mean, in a space that had not been used for 14, 15 months um, whatsoever, <laughs> other than the garage outside for vaccinations. So, I mean, talk about a total ramp up of going from nothing to using almost a million square feet of space. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I think in their back. And, you know, if you have a new person you're going to right now, how do you do that? It's hands on. It's and you're not it's not a hundred person event usually either. That's coming back right away either. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I know. My first event was um, 450, 500 people two weeks ago, my fourth day on the job. So, yeah. I mean, there you go. <laughs> yeah. You're like, and this is what I know on day four about the company. <laughs> but, so, that yeah. speaks a lot to transferable skills, though, um, because you were able to use what you learned in your other positions and other companies, whether it was hotel or catering. Um, and use that to be able to jump in and, and 
run with that event on day four of your new job. Um, that that speaks a lot to to transferring, you know, those skills that you've learned along the way into what you're doing now. Yeah, I mean, I'm so grateful for all of the the mentors and people that I had, you know, throughout my career. I mean, starting with you, yeah. Nikki. I mean, just like those baseline things that it's basically just like in your blood and your muscles now, mm -hmm. you know, really you can kind of go anywhere after a certain period of time and be able to be successful. Yeah. And all the crazy things that we make you do <laughs> in classroom. Yeah. Uh, and we, we did, we've done some crazy stuff over the years, but um, you know, all of that, we do those things for a reason and we make you do group work for a reason and we make you, go out and do, you know, man on the street kind of intercept interview surveys for a reason and, and all of those things that might seem crazy at the time, yeah. um, build those skills. And um, so, you know, it pays off over the long haul. Yeah. You made us do, <laughs> you made us do a video resume in the senior class. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My God. I hated it. I hated it so much. <laughs> And <laughs> I went to like the bamboo forest to do mine and there was like snakes everywhere. Oh, I just hated it. But I think about it all the time. And I really think that that experience was really helpful. I mean, look at us now. We're all have to look at each other on Zooms yeah. and FaceTimes. And, you know, you're talking to clients halfway across the country. You're FaceTiming. I mean, I really think about that experience and how much I didn't enjoy it but really how helpful it ended up being that I was able to like be comfortable on a camera. You know, it was yeah. a good example. <laughs> it's so you, funny. You that 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 together, didn't you? <laughs> because well, I had completely forgot about that, but do you know, I forget about that constantly. And every time I think about it is when I'm on YouTube and I go from our business page to my old personal YouTube. <laughs> and it's like there because yeah. it's, Cause it's all SIU stuff, you know? So I worked with cheerleading on tryouts. So I have your, my, my best view video is cheerleading tryout videos of how to do it. <laughs> and then very high up there with my other videos, it's that is my personal interview. And, you know, I sit back and I look at it and I'm like, I learned so much about video editing since then, you know, sure. I now oh, co-own a company that does video <laughs> editing. And I'm thinking current me with that Sony Handycam, <laughs> That did we even have Sony handy cams back then? I keep thinking we had um what did we what oh gosh, I can't think of what um the flip the flips it, we yeah. used the flips with some of those. Yeah, that was like yes. one of the early Yes um I I'm, yeah, I I'm always <laughs> trying to be ahead of the game where technology is concerned, but mm -hmm. um and and that that predates even us being able to do virtual interviews now in that class. And, and we're talking about um, um, what used to be a senior seminar kind of career prep classes now includes juniors now too. Um, but now we do interviews through um, career development on campus, which you guys did too, but it was all face to face then. Um, now it's a two-step process where they have to do the, the virtual interview first. And it, it's kind of just your generic interview questions on that one. Um, but they have to complete that first before they can go in and, and sit for the in-person interview. So there, our students are getting both. And, and I'm sure they hate it. <laughs> um, you know, I'm sure that's not the most fun thing, but it's recorded. They can go back and watch and, and uh, make improvements where they need to. And then we've done that five or six years probably and fast forward and we hit a pandemic and guess what we're all doing. And if you're interviewing for a job, I can't tell you the number of, of um, candidates we've interviewed virtually in the past couple of years. So what's so funny about this virtual is, you know, we laugh and say like how terrible it was, how we didn't want to do that back then. <laughs> um, and I still probably don't really want to do it now, but <laughs> if I'm being honest, but I'm literally on my to-do list today is scripting out a two minute video because mm -hmm. I have to submit a video for a um, social media gig that we're applying to do. And it's a two minute video about me, not the company about me. And so I really, I'm probably just going to watch that video again, just to see like what cringy things should I not do? Yeah. Um, but Look at that. Talk about job interviews. And right now what we're seeing in social media world um, have you guys heard about TikTok job applications? Oh, see, now that's a new one. 
It's happening. So TikTok is introducing a brand new feature. Um, they are beta testing it, I believe, right now. Uh, so I don't think it's fully rolled out. But they're becoming the next LinkedIn, and which is insane wow. because LinkedIn, and I think it's September, introduces video interview through LinkedIn. And what they'll do, it, TikTok, and I think LinkedIn is doing the same thing, is when you go to submit your resume, you also submit a blank interview like video. So, you know, the employer can say, we want to see your best 30 or 60 second TikTok about you, why we should hire you. And TikTok is, or that's TikTok. LinkedIn is going to be doing the similar thing of with your application, you'll submit a one minute or two minute video um, through the LinkedIn portal. And so it's just crazy about uh, that stuff. And someone just commented, I have found out about so many job opportunities through TikTok. That's exactly why they're doing it. Yeah. You know, it's a huge thing right now, um, finding gig work, finding, you know, real sustainable jobs that are, you know, long going. People are talking about jobs so much on TikTok. TikTok's like, let's capitalize on this, you know, and they're going to be able to charge employers to accept yeah. applications where their job pool is. You know, college kids are there. The th other people are there that are not in the college age decade. <laughs> I was all I love that it changes like this so quickly over time, yeah. like for every generation, like what is appropriate for, you know, recent graduates and what fits for them and, you know, in finding their careers and finding their match as far as a job goes, you know, sometimes when you would read, you know, old school books about applying for jobs and how to write a resume, sometimes that stuff didn't resonate with me when I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I remember being told not to put my picture on my resume and now I can't look through resumes without a picture on it. Picture, yeah. I mean, I love the evolution of it and that it's, it's appropriate for the, the people, the recent graduates starting their career path. I think it's great. I love it. Yeah. And that's that. So I'm learning that I need to add that video assignment back into the class. <laughs> but it needs to be 30 seconds for TikTok, right? So yes, and, and it's so crazy too because like that's the thing is what's different is you know I think our interview video or not interview video I guess our personal brand video I'm not sure now I'm gonna have to watch it right after this but you know two three minutes long whatever it was and we were all trying to be creative and unique with it but people know that already you know, right? They're doing TikTok and they're doing these things. And now you don't have to attempt to make it this big production anymore. And there's a lot of stuff out there in social media world. Now I, at 2 AM, I was watching a video last night about creators talking about how videos explode that are more realistic sometimes. And even if you shoot them with professional cameras and hire a company, they still want a real feel. They want it to be Jessica telling them why they should choose this event venue or why they, she, they should drink this coffee. They don't want, you know, some media agency to come off saying, do this, do this. And, you know, they want to hear from Jessica, even if a media agency is producing it. Yeah. I mean, it's so, that's really to the point of, it doesn't matter if it's a sheet, a resume, that's blank without your picture or all the way up to, you know, a 30 second TikTok video. I think it's important that as long as, you know, the person is being authentic and honest and is, you know, truly displaying their passion for whatever they're doing, that that's going to, you know, lead you to success at the end of the day as, you know, is, is the authenticity behind all of it. Sure. And, you know, one of the things that that I was stressing a long time ago in classes was make sure you understand social media and, and not just, you know, posting on Facebook, um, but really understand how it works and how you can use it to your advantage. Uh, and I even and, th and this was a, a year or two after you guys, I think I challenged that same class that you were talking about um, to find an interview using only social media. And they all thought I was crazy. <laughs> because we weren't quite there yet. Um, you know, we didn't have LinkedIn as strong as it is now. We didn't, we just didn't, we weren't there yet. And I had one student actually um, do that. And she ended up, if I remember correctly, ended up interviewing and I think getting the job, but I don't, don't hold me to that because I don't remember. Um, but it kind of, it kind of proved my point that you can use all of this. And now it's TikTok and LinkedIn, you know, coming out exactly like you said with something. And 
um, the evolution of it all and what is it going to be next year or the year after in five years and it'll be something totally different. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe not, you know, you never know staying power, but. Yeah. And I think and it is unique because you do never know, uh, you know, and I think a lot of like coming out of uh, the pandemic, you know, we're in an employee market right now. It's not in favor of the employer. Uh, there is way more open positions than there are people who can even fill them. And that was pre-pandemic. And now, you know, you're in that situation again. Yeah. And so being authentically you, I think it just helps so much. And there's so much change right now. And I think we're also seeing, though, like events, in-person events. A lot of people during the pandemic said, well, we'll never see, because uh, I was in corporate <laughs> marketing at the time. I didn't own a business. I wasn't wearing uh, Hawaiian shirts every day and uh, shorts and, you know, and in <laughs> corporate America, a lot of people were scared and thinking, you know, people had been in business for 60 years. I had heard many people say events will never come back like they used to be. Events yeah. will never come back like they used to be. People will not travel like they used to. They won't do business travel like they used to. And, you know, and, but we adapted and changed. Maybe people won't take as many in-person conferences. Now we're going to do them digitally. Now we're going to do them in person. And then May and June hits this year as restrictions lifted and things like that and vaccines rolled out and events were back. Events were back better. They were bigger. They were different. And you know, fast and furious, yeah. And and there's money made to be either way. You know, virtual events have money in them and there's a lot of planning that goes involved and in, you know, mm -hmm. AdWorld didn't sit at sit and say, oh, we can't do it in person, so we're not gonna do it. They have fifty thousand people, multiple stages, gorgeous setups. Yep you know, for those people to be in and, you know, they need those people to, uh, that will adapt and will change. And it's that future generations that, you know, will come through places like SIU's hospitality program and events program to say, you know, we learned differently. We did different. Um, we've survived a lot, you know, the younger generation the millennials and Gen Z's and the next generations, you know, they, we've all been through terrorist attacks and pandemics and economic recessions and, um, you just adapt. I think that's what our generation and um, has learned the best. And the generations after us will learn even probably better. Uh, nothing stays the same and things do stay the same all at the same time. I know it's the most cliche thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, Go ahead. Um, no, kind of to your point, I, I was, I was kind of on the fence as to where events were going to end up because in my head it was like, okay, are we going to have these, socially distanced events for a while? Are we going to have, um, you know, individual catering practices as opposed to plated or buffet or whatever? I, it, it was really kind of a, where is this going to end up question? Um, and what I'm seeing where, where, where we are, where I am anyway, is kind of back to normal. We're, we're not as concerned about all those things. Um, but I'm also seeing big conventions do in person and keep the virtual component. And I think that's so important um, and even, you know, the Cocktail Academy, I was poking around on their website, um, totally infatuated, by the way, with the website, <laughs> um, but, but you guys are still doing great events. Yeah, yeah it, it's a, I, I'm so excited for you to have this job. Um, but even now that we know we can come together in a virtual way, um, people that are all over the country, all over the world, you know, we're doing this from three different points on the map, um, you know, both coasts and smack in the middle, really. Um, you know, think about that from a get together standpoint, even just friends getting together to have, you know, a virtual cocktail party because they're all over the place and they can't physically be in the same room. So I think there's a lot to be said for, for that technology moving forward. Yeah, for I mean, kind of what, you know, what you were saying is that there's this hybrid happening now mm -hmm. that, you know, virtual events, I remember on my interviews with Cocktail Academy, you know, they mentioned they had pivoted to cocktail kits, you know, after events went away and fabricating and creating these like very awesome boxes. And then, you know, there was all those unboxing mm -hmm. videos on Instagram and TikTok and stuff. And, you know, they pivoted and um, to, to adapt to whatever that climate was and they're not going away. So now that even events are back, we are still busier than ever with those, those kits. They are still going yeah. out. They are still new ones being created, you know, and there's this hybrid now of live and in, in person um, events. So it's fun to see it. Um, it's I think, yeah. I, that just sounds fun. Like if you like, you know, get two or three or four or five, however many people you all have like the same kind of cocktail kit. Like, so it's literally like you're doing the same thing, 
-hmm. but you're virtual and it's great because there's no way I'm going to, you know, fly across the country or drive hundreds of miles to go see friends, you know, necessarily just on a whim, like, Oh, it's a Tuesday. Let's meet in Atlanta for cocktail hour or something. But, and, but you're still sharing like a similar experience. And I love that. Um, and it's so important to pivot because yes. companies who did stayed and, you know, that's the thing is it's, you never want a company to go out and things like that. You know, good companies, I guess there's probably bad companies that are okay, but um, you know, when good companies, you know, failed and things like that, it's like, you've got to pivot and it's so difficult for a lot of people. Um, but that's the name of the game. And I think that's why hospitality businesses like yours, you know, existed and stayed and they did do that pivot. And I love that it's better. It's bigger than it was even. Um, yeah, yeah. What, a, what a great revenue stream. Cause now <laughs> if it happens again and events go away again, Boom. They already are they're there. They're prepared. Okay, don't jinx this. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> we survived, you know, 18 months. Um, we are actually a few minutes over our 1130 mark. And I'm hearing myself echo somewhere. Shocker that the three, the three probably biggest talkers. <laughs> yeah, I remember that too about. Yeah, our classes, um, and that's what I love <laughs> about us doing us doing this kind of a, a, a live show because we're bringing back and you you guys went through um, most of your your classes together if I remember. Yeah. Uh, yep. But kind of bringing that family of sorts back together just you know for a little bit of time, but but yes, we we are all talkers. Um, yeah. And one of these episodes are just going to be follow. like the Brady Bunch nine box episode <laughs> we'll have to do that um yeah. i think can i can we, i can post 10 of us on screen at once here so can we also all have cocktail academy boxes <laughs> maybe. maybe we could do that yeah, we need some time Let's see what yeah. I mean. yeah we might have to do that one after five o'clock my time so i don't get in trouble but <laughs> yeah okay. um, oh, yeah Saturday. that's valid <laughs> so i mean i'm, I'm, I'm willing any time of the day for yeah, that yeah. it's uh yeah we found that out last night talking with a rum conversation but um, thank you so much, Jessica, for spending some time with us this morning and catching Thanks us up on what you've been doing. And, yeah. And uh, Zachary, of course, thank you for, for co-hosting. And it's uh, I'm going to put everybody's, um, as soon as I can find them, websites back up real fast so people can find you. So Cocktail Academy, virtual and in-person events mm -hmm. um, and video production by Zachary. <laughs> And of course, if you are interested in uh, more about our program, that is our direct website. And I manage all the social media, so please feel free to reach out on Facebook. Um, we do have Instagram, although I'm not I'm not great at keeping up with it. So it's it's a lot to keep up. I need Zachary. I need you to keep up with that for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. Hey, just add that to all the other accounts that I manage. It's it's fine. I have nonstop notifications. <laughs> it, uh, that is no lie. So again, thank you to you both. And that wraps up episode two. It's awesome. We always have fun. Thanks oh, for having right, me. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for joining.